Hi, my name is Ashish and in this video, we will see defined policy settings for the DLP policy. So when creating a brand new DLP policy, we are able to start with a template or create a custom policy. Policy templates are a starting point for building DLP policies that help us meet the specific regulatory or business policy needs. We can modify the templates to meet the specific needs as per the requirement for our from our organization. So let me just quickly log on to the portal and take it from there. All right, so I am logged on to the portal and I will go to the data loss prevention here and I click on policies. Okay, and now you click on create policy under DLP or data loss prevention. Start with a template or create a custom policy. I will start with the template. It's a simple uh, workflow. So there are two different workflows when you define policy settings, simple and advanced. The simple workflow starts if you choose the review and customize default settings from the template. Okay. And option on the define policy settings where uh, when we will reach at this point, the more advanced flow is initiated if you choose create or customize advanced DLP rules. So to begin with, I will just define uh, the policy settings. So let me choose financial. We'll say UK financial data. Here we'll click on next. I will go with the name as UK financial data, the same description. It will take me to the admin units. It is taking few extra seconds. Don't worry. Okay. Assign admin units. Choose the admin units you would like to assign this policy to. I'm not choosing any. I will just say full directory. And now it says choose where to apply the policy. I'll just go with the default. Define policy settings. So this is what I was talking about. Simple workflow would be to have review and customize default settings from the template or the advanced would be to create or customized advanced workflow. So if I go with this, I, you click on here. It says detect when this content is shared from Microsoft 365 with people outside my organization. The reason, okay. Then you click on next. Protection actions are they will automatically create detailed activity reports so you can review the content that matches this policy. When content matches the policy conditions, show policy tips to users and send them an email notification. This will appear to users in their apps whatever the whatever data they are trying to share and then detect when a specific amount of sensitive info is being shared at one time after at least 10 or more instances send incident reports in email send alerts if any of the dlp rule matches or restrict access or encrypt the content in microsoft 365 this is the protection action i'm going just with the default to show you customize access and override settings by default users are blocked from sending emails and team chats and channel messages that contain the type of content we are protecting. But we can still choose who has access to shared SharePoint and OneDrive files. Okay, and we can also decide if we want to let people override the policy restrictions. So restrict access or encrypt the content in uh, Microsoft 365 locations, block users from receiving emails if I want to restrict if I don't want to, I would say restrict third party apps and then I will mention the app's name as well. Okay, that totally depends upon what are the protection actions or the override actions you want to take. You click on next, run the policy in test mode. When you click on next, it will submit and it will create this test policy. Now, if you go back, and if you say create or customize advanced TLP rules, which is the advanced workflow, okay, it will use a rule editor to extend the options offered in the simple workflow. Let me show you how. Now, 
it will give you this. You can now use the advanced flow to refine the policy settings rules that would include more conditions, exceptions and actions. The advanced workflow branch is also the only option available if custom is selected during the uh, choose locations to apply the step. Okay, now you can create a rule here as per uh, your requirement. Okay, so now if we use the UK financial data policy template that we started with, the image with the expanded DLP rule will show a summary of the two default rules associated. So here, these are the two default rules. One rule is for detecting a low volume of content and the second rule is for detecting high volume of content. Notice in this, uh, in this screen, the actions that are listed. One set of actions is defined for when a low number of, let me show you here. Conditions is contains, content can, contains any of these information type. Content is shared from 365 with people outside my organization. Actions is notify users with emails and policy tips. Send alerts to the administrator. Same way if you see the second condition notify users with emails and policy tapes, restrict access to the content for external users, send incident reports to administrators, send alerts to administrator. Okay. So you can edit these rules. If you click on edit here, you can edit these rules as well. Okay. And then you can add the conditions with the exceptions, actions and uh, here. Okay, actions are here or the user overrides or user notifications. Here, incident reports and how the incident would be handled. Okay, the, the, the condition, the uh, which is high volume of content detected, you can do the same as here as well. Okay, if you scroll down, you say high confidence, high confidence, medium confidence, content is shared and the action. So by default, users are blocked from sending any emails or Teams chats and channel messages that contain the type of content. We are protected by the actions in the high volume of content. It's it block users, block only people outside your organization. Okay. The restrict access or encrypt the content in Microsoft 365 locations, which is enabled by default in this rule. Okay. And the audit or restrict activities on Windows devices action is not included by default that you can add in the audit or restricted access. If I scroll down. On devices, let me look for it. Here. You can add the third party as well. Okay. Let me delete it. Delete this as well. Prevent edit notification email, add or remove people as well. So the audit or restrict activities on Windows device, which is not uh, included by default when you do it, the ability to audit or uh, restrict activities on the devices is part of the functionality referred to as endpoint data loss prevention. So in this example, 
you can choose to block each type of endpoint activity like printing and copying sensitive data to the clipboard but allow users to override it so in addition you are able to select audit or restricted activities when users access sensitive sites in microsoft edge browser on windows devices okay so this choice would allow you to restrict activities on windows devices in microsoft edge browser when users access a sensitive site Okay, and then you can mention user notifications and overrides here and the notifications part as well. So the image of user notifications here uh, would show you that user notifications and overrides in the high volume of content detected. So user notifications take the form of emails and or policy tips designed to educate users on the proper use of sensitive information there may be occasions where as an admin you want to notify someone else besides the user uh, or customize the message or policy tab is displayed now you have the flexibility in deciding who is informed about the incident and how they are notified and then there are incident reports as well here so if a rule is matched or when a rule is matched different types of incident reports can be generated to make users with administrative or oversight responsibilities aware we can send an incident report to the compliance officer or anyone we choose with details of the event as with user notifications we have several options as well like we have here okay so I hope this was informative for all of you guys. If you have any further queries, please mention them in the comment section and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you. Have a good day.